mentioned a little bit earlier on, uh, Cliff Richard has got his trainers on. He is on standby. Why? Well, because it's time for Wimbledon. <laughs> Tennis. I know it excites many people. Since Bjorn Borg retired, it's lost its appeal for me. However, one thing does maintain my interest. Tennis balls! They're just blooming ace, aren't they? But we know very little about the world of the tennis ball, other than they've got that uh, swirly line on them. All of them, tennis balls, all look the same, unlike footballs, which can take any old shape. Why? And why do we need new balls, please? Well, we have all of these questions to ask, but first of all, let's find out about a brand new, environmentally friendly tennis ball, uh, which has been created by Price of Bath, which is the only tennis ball manufacturer in the UK. Is that right? Let's find out with Louise Price, who is a director at Price of Bath. Good morning to you. Morning. Good morning. So is this, you are the last tennis ball manufacturer here in the UK? We are. In fact, the whole Western world, where the, the, um, the, all the other manufacturers are in the Far East. What a responsibility, being in charge of tennis balls in the Western world. It's just what we've done for, for well, since 1936, my granddad started uh, the business and, and uh, when I'm still here. Did you have any choice but to enter the world of tennis balls? Oh, I absolutely did. I actually only joined the family business eight years ago. Um, and um, I came to help out um, on some digital marketing and fell in love with, um, well, the whole company, really, making something from scratch. You know, fa we're like a family. A lot of the workers have been here for a very long time. And uh, I just loved it. So, yeah. I love that, that it's a family business and you make it from scratch. So few businesses do that nowadays. Uh, so to have something that you make uh, from from beginning to end is quite something. Now, as well as, you know, traditional tennis balls, we'll get onto that in a moment, you're in the news today because you have created the first environmentally friendly tennis ball. Now, how does it work? Uh, well, we, um, we collected in lots of old tennis balls and um, started to work out how we could process them back into new, a new tennis ball mix to still get a performance ball. And uh, it's pretty tricky, took a very long time, but we managed to do it. And um, that's, the, that's the Phoenix. That's the, our first ball. And uh, we released it a few months ago. We had some very good feedback and um, we're very excited about it. What is it that makes it environmentally friendly? So, um, so normally there's 300 odd thousand tennis balls, three, sorry, 300 million tennis balls made uh, a year globally, and um, those balls essentially end up in landfill at the end of the day. And uh, so we take whole new te old tennis balls that have been played with, and we reprocess that whole ball, including the cloth back down to um, a substance we can use and we put that all of that back into our new mix so um, and essentially we can do that over and over again so you could play with the same ball we constituted time and time again um, further down the line so it would never end up in the bin so you take this is brilliant so so the, the same ball sort of stays in circulation forever it just goes off to sort of be reshaped and reworked yeah. this infinite times Wow, 300 million tennis balls um, every year. That's a lot of balls in landfill, isn't it? Yeah, I think some of them get repurposed into children's playgrounds um, or into schools or tennis clubs but, or, or given to dogs or something like that. But ultimately, um, you know, rubber is, although it's a natural product, but it's vulcanised, which is what you do when you're making a tennis ball, um, it can't break down or it takes a very long time to break down. So even when they end up in landfill, uh, they're, you know, it, it's, it's years, decades, more than decades. Um, so we decided to do something about it. You know, let's, let's try and put that old rubber back in um, to a new ball. And, and it is pretty difficult because you lose the bounce um, and uh, at the hardness of a ball. But... Um, so the key is to make sure that the ball performs properly. So when tennis players go onto court, that they don't know they're playing with a recycled product. They just think they're playing with a tournament quality ball and, uh, and they're happy with the performance. And hopefully for that reason, it will be become very popular.
Well, let's hope so. I mean, I suppose the dream is to get your ball um, used in a tournament. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, lots of tournaments have um, their own arrangements and sponsorships. Um, and who knows what's down the road for us. Um, but we are working towards getting our ball um, internationally um, approved with the International Tennis Federation. And once that's got, uh, once it's got its approval, then essentially it can be played in any um, LTA sanctioned event. Wow. You must be really proud because I know that since you joined the company, that this has been your baby, hasn't it? The launch of the, uh, the Phoenix, the recyclable ball. It has. I, I, I've got three children myself and uh, I... It, you know, running a business obviously is about, um, you know, um, profit and, and staying in business. But but once, you know, once you get past that, it's, you know, how, how, we, how can we impact our future? And for me, you know, making sure my staff are happy, um, making sure they've got somewhere they want to work is, is really important. But the next thing on the uh, for me is, is making sure that we've got a planet that our, our children you know, can grow up in or my grandchildren can grow up in. And, and I just feel like if we don't do something now, you know, this is this is uh, tennis balls. I don't think anyone even thinks about. It's just a commodity that's used and then passed on. So, yeah, that was our sparse starting point, really. This might surprise you. Tennis ball is one of the things I do think about quite a lot. I have many questions <laughs> about the world of the tennis ball. So if I may, we will trouble you with some of those questions in just a moment. Now then, Wimbledon gets underway today, so the rain has started too. But it got us thinking about tennis balls. You may have seen in the news um, these, the incredible ball that's been developed by Price of Bath, the only we have discovered this tennis ball manufacturer in the Western world. I know. Um, they've developed a ball that is completely recyclable. Really exciting, this, uh, because they're made of vulcanised rubber. Now, it occurred to us this morning, Louise, that I had many questions about tennis balls. Usually we have an item on the show called the Wikipedia, so if there's a question to be asked, we ask it there. But there were so many questions, I couldn't narrow it down to just one. So I wanted to, if I may, talk to you about the world of the tennis ball. You said that they're made of vulcanised rubber. Presumably... They don't look like a thing that's changed much. No, I mean, essentially, the tennis ball hasn't changed since it, it was invented. Uh, it's become a little bit more durable, um, so a little bit stronger. Uh, but the um, the way a tennis ball is made um, by vulcanising rubber, taking natural rubber from, you know, rubber trees um, and, and adding an ingredient um, to it hasn't changed at all um, for, for, for donkey years, in fact. Wow. So it's made from, this sounds like you're making it up, they make it with the rubber from the rubber tree <laughs> and, turn, and turn it into a ball. Now, they, they, are they pressurised? How, how does the ball keep its shape? Because it's flacked endlessly. So um, a ball is made of two halves. Um, and those halves are joined together. Uh, there's two types of tennis balls, and, and the ones that are play at Wimbledon are pressurised. Um, so those two halves are joined together, and at the same time, air is um, created in the chamber to a certain pressure, um, and that air provides an extra little bit of bounce. So the ball bounces anyway, but to get it to perform exactly right for the tournaments, um, the air chamber is pressurised. And, um, well, you're right. So when they hit pretty hard, 100 miles an hour, some of the serves at Wimbledon, that air gets knocked out, which is why you see um, the players always bouncing the balls first because they're checking to see if the bounce is right. Um, and then they regularly change balls um, after a certain number of games. So that, And that's because the air has been sort of beaten out of the middle, then? That's Absolutely. when they shout, yes. new balls, please? yes. And so, wow! So, and do the ball pre presumably starts to perform differently. So, when players sometimes they bounce the ball and reject it, is that because they think they, there's not enough air in it? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, to a good tennis player or um, an average tennis player, or or myself, which is I'm fairly average, <laughs> I probably wouldn't notice the difference of an. Um, but the, you know, the top players uh, would know absolutely an inch bounce or you know two and a half centimeter bounce will be all the difference between how it how it performs in its return shot, how it comes off the racket, um, and obviously they're they're the pros. They know you know they expect their kit to be top tip. So they, I mean, the balls get changed a lot, don't they, during a game? Where do the balls go? 
So I know Wimbledon donate um, their balls to local schools and clubs afterwards. So obviously a child or somebody who's not a top player doesn't need a top performance ball. So a ball that bounces a little bit less is absolutely fine. But um, but or, or some of them get, uh, not for Wimbledon, but other clubs donate to clubs, uh, to dog homes or schools or play groups. But ultimately, there isn't anywhere for them to go apart from those places unless they go to landfill. I just imagine the joy at the dog's home <laughs> when a massive load of tennis... Lewis, Fido, check this out. Arr, 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 when this big load of, uh, of tennis balls turns up. Now, the question everybody asked here in the office this morning was, why the shape of... You know, with the, the sort of the curved seam that you get on a tennis ball, why is that? Because all tennis balls look like that, don't they, with that curved seam? It is a really simple answer. It's it's you just have to be able to get the cloth on on the, on the sphere, and the only way to do it is using those two shapes, so they can the the edges can be knitted together evenly across the ball. Um, we've tried others, tried, but it but it's it's the most um, time efficient and cost effective way of doing it. So that's just purely at that figure eight. Because I was saying this morning, it might be breaking strain. It's to to keep things even. It's not that. It's just the only way of getting the fabric over the ball safely. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we have um, years ago we used to flock tennis balls where we sprayed them with bit like ten, bit like toys are sprayed them with the fluff. But the um, that's just not durable. The cloth actually provides the ball with some strength. Um, uh, and it, you know, our cloth is, is woven. It comes from a, a company in Stroud, so it's British made as well. Um, and, and actually, they serve half the tennis world. They're, um, they're, it was a world famous cloth. So, um, yeah, that's why, that's why the seam is in that shape. Wow. So, the, is that what they make exclusively, cloth for tennis balls? They, they, the business does two things they make uh, tennis ball cloth and snooker cloth. There's another voyage of discovery right there. Right, come on. We're off to Stroud next to find out all about that. Wow, niche businesses. I absolutely love it. I wish you every success with this. And fingers crossed, every tennis club in the world will start picking up recyclable tennis balls. Who'd have thunk it? 30, 300 million tennis balls made every year to get a lot of them recyclable would be absolutely brilliant. What a dream. Louise Price, uh, who is the director of Price of Bath, the only... Tennis ball manufacturer in the Western world.